This episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast is brought to you by Nomadicare. Now, personally, I love Nomadicare. I've used Nomadicare, and I recommend the company to all new travelers. What Nomadicare does is it takes the fear out of getting set up with a bad recruiter, which is the biggest fear that you have jumping into this journey. So they sit down, they interview recruiters, they vet them, get them on a list, and then provide them to you as a free service, as a free recruiter matchmaking service in order to get you started on your journey. Now, usually you only get two recruiters going through Nomadicare, but being a listener of the show, you can get three. So this is how it's going to work. You go to nomadicare.com slash Dylan. You will get set up with three recruiters to be on your dream team, as well as a guide to get you started on your journey. Log off. Where are we at in the world right now? We are in beautiful uh, Clearwater, Florida. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Dylan Calderon. Today, I am bringing a very special person, a mentor of mine, Paul Goff. Um, Paul, do you mind telling the listeners a little bit about yourself um, and what you do? Yeah, my uh, so my background. Obviously, I'm a physiotherapist from England, a licensed, fully qualified physical therapist from England. I uh, began life as a professional soccer physical therapist, and then after five seasons, I quit my job to start my own business and grew uh, a company called the Polkoff Physio Rooms from scratch to a million plus revenue with four clinics, uh, twenty odd staff, and around about two thousand visits a year. It's amazing. And so you started in England, and then now you're here in the states, but you also enjoy travel, and that's why I brought you on the show. Well, ultimately, travel is my uh, is my like vice, if you like. Yes. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to quit the soccer job was because it limited to, to the amount of travel that I could do. I was limited to a very small window in the summer, and uh, it kind of tied me from getting places like Australia and here in Asia. Those the season that I was off, it was like May every year I was off. Those were the like worst times to go to those types of places, and it, it just made it very difficult for me to get and enjoy the travel. Like, you know, travel side of the things that I wanted to do, so I quit. Uh, so you were traveling a lot while in England, and then decided to make the move here in the States. Um, how did you decide where you wanted to go? Kind of yeah, like well, we're, still, we're still transitioning right now, we're, we're just waiting for that final uh, paperwork to come through for us to move. But obviously we've been coming forward, back and forth here, uh, for the last, I mean I've been coming here since I was a kid, and, and obviously in the last three years I've been building my business. Um, I've traveled across all of the states and you know, started to get a bit of an idea of where I would like to go, you know, my business from and, and spend time with my family and let my kids be happy and comfortable and safe and, and where will the weather be good and so on. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, anywhere sunny is usually where I like to be in the US. Cause, uh, <laughs> Certified summer chase. I don't get to see much of it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, kind of talking about why you quit that, that original job, which sounded like was probably your dream job at the time, yeah. traveling to soccer teams or football teams. Um, and we're here at the conference, Smart Success PT Live, and one of the big themes is trading time for money. Yeah. Could you explain on that and kind of how it has affected you and built your business into what it is today? Uh, yeah, look, I, I think we're always trading time for money. You know, every single one of us is, and I think it's grossly misover misunderstood the whole concept of time for money. Um, ultimately, every one of us, whether I'm sending an email or you know, you're doing a podcast, you're doing whatever, we're, we're all trading, um, we're all, we all are trading time for money, but ultimately it's how can we create leverage, how can we build something that requires less of our time, still some of our time, uh, but pays us a return, and while that pays us a return, it's our time, more of our time goes into something else that pays us a return. So for me, it was... Um, it was always a it was a better design to run a business and I generally love business and it's my my thing, my hobby, my just you know, keeps me awake at night kind of in a good way. Yeah. Thing. So so yeah, I guess evolution, study and learning and just making good decisions at the right time when you know, my body was telling me that it's time, time to move on. And when I'm staring at a patient who's got an ACL problem and I'm thinking about Facebook advertising <laughs> I knew it was time to go. <laughs> I, I used to think that being a contractor, a medical contractor, was kind of breaking that mold, you know, getting out of the rat race, and I realized it's still, you're still working for somebody. Yeah. You're just more skilled, um, hired, and you're, you know, the hired gun coming in and yeah. stepping into the systems and just starting day one. Yeah. That's what you're paid to do. Um, but I do think a lot of travelers have that entrepreneurial spirit, spirit in them because they want a life, kind of what you're living, what you've been able to create. 
and trying to get more time for those adventures, yeah. for those cultural differences and things, and all those experiences. So I do think a lot of travelers are trying to achieve that next step, and go forward with that. But it's there's always a trade-off, and it, 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 there's never an absolute perfect, you know, storm or situation. Like, look, I'm here at the time of my life in Florida. My kid's not here this time. And, and it's like, it's a trade off. So the perfect scenario is that they're with me every time I travel or every time I go, but it's not, that's not what happened. But is the bigger picture of what we're doing and why I'm here and all the impact I can have on people and it impacts my whole family's life further down the line is worth the sacrifice of the six days. It's the same with the, you know, anybody who's in a job right now who is in the system, but it's making sure that if you've chosen a travel life, that you are actually going out and seeing the bloody cities that you've, you know, you've, you've decided to. to, to People go to Spain or wherever from Britain, and it's like they could have just went anywhere because they just sit on the beach and buy a pool. And yet they claim it would be in Spain. It's like, mm-hmm. You have You just went on a flight that landed you at an airport. A taxi picked you up and took you to the hotel. You got drunk for seven days, sat on the <laughs> beach, and went to a nightclub once or twice, and then went home. But like you haven't been to Spain, I think. Mean, you haven't been to the museums or spoke the language or you know, gone into a random place in the middle of nowhere and tried to converse with someone who doesn't understand you and find your way back in a taxi when you don't know where you're going and so on and so forth. Like that's the travel. Like I've done all of that stuff here. Everywhere from Sri Lanka to India, it's like you know, that's that seeing that seeing countries and, and um, that's ultimately what I think that you know if you're a travel PT and you're doing these things, you've got to make sure that you're not just there. You actually see it you know, or experience it and do it while you're there. One of my big whys is to get the flexibility to take time off when I can. So when I first started um, working, I worked with my friend and he was owning a business and you know, I was kind of teaming up with him. And he just didn't understand, like, oh, yeah, you can travel with us. We'll send you to a course in Virginia for a week. Yeah. Like that. It's like, no, it's, it's, it's kind of going over his head. Uh, being able to take two months off and go live yeah. somewhere yeah. and yeah. actually experience it versus, you know, a vacation where you're trying to do all the things within a week yeah. and then you're back home just to grind. Yeah. Um, we got to meet here a year ago. Yeah. I bumped into you at the pool. You had little Harry. Um, I didn't know who you were at the time and then everybody was like, this ball is like, I don't know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so we chatted and you're real cool, kind of chat about travel a little bit. Um, and then I got to see your speak. Amazing. I love your communication and just you know, your content, obviously, as well. Um, then we met up in St. Louis. Yeah. And kind of going forward from there. You're able to travel the world and give talks and speech, speeches and help other individuals all around. Did you envision yourself kind of growing into this? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no. It, it never in a million years. There's no way on earth I could have ever predicted what time any impact that we're having right now on well, hopefully a you know, global community but you have to just keep going it's like one of these things you just start something and once you start it just keep just keep working forward um, I knew I could do something I knew I could help people and I knew I could, could make something you know, I've got a lot of lessons that I've learned and I'm happy to share but I had no idea I would be a global speaker you know, from, from one country to the next each month and popping on and off players getting in front of the big audiences and basically passing on my, my message about business, so it's uh, yeah, it's been fun. It's been a uh, yeah. yeah. Switching gears a little bit, what has been your favorite travel story so far? Got so many. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I love Asia. Anywhere in Asia, Sri Lanka, India, I've been to Malaysia, Singapore. Uh, I've got right, Sri Lanka and India and certainly some of them sort of funnest, you know, fun yeah. memories if you like, because uh, like I've traveled all over Australia and, and they're great, I've done a lot of that with my family and, and kids, but I think the fun ones are the random, you know, middle of India or middle of Sri Lanka, you land yeah. in the middle of the night and it's like, what the hell is cows on the road? <laughs> um, I remember traveling to the Taj Mahal and it took like eight hours because literally a million people were marching from the south of India to the north, wow. the road was all taken up, so it basically went two, two sets of highway traffic were in one road plus the cows, plus the bloody sheep, and plus everything else. And everybody's like literally weaving in and out of each other to head to the, to the Taj Mahal, and it took us about eight hours to do it. What would have been a 75 minute journey. We, like, we got to the Taj, seen it for an hour, got back in the car, because we were flying the next morning, and we were like so tight on getting back to the hotel and getting on a flight back to India, or back to Dubai, and then back to England. So it's crazy. So I would say India and Sri Lanka, many times in Sri Lanka, I've just jumped on a, on a pod bike, 
not far away. You know, on a little scooter. Oh, sorry, yeah. to the middle of like the back of beyond in a village somewhere that nobody speaks the Queen's English, and like, you could disappear <laughs> at any moment in time, and nobody would know you were even gone. Um, something, you know. Th- those are my best stories of growth as I've travelled. Those were the sort of days. You know, so I don't really get a chance to do much of that right now with uh, the kids and stuff. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I think that's how it evolved. You know, evolved my character and having confidence. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Personal growth, and obviously professional growth, and everything else that you're doing as well. Um, is there something that you travel with everywhere you go that you feel like you could travel without? My phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my phone and a, and a passport. That's about it. I really don't think you do need anything. And then, again, the, the sort of the more the more raw you are as you travel, and the more sort of in touch with you are of, of whatever it is that you're doing. Better it is. To, yeah, my books would be. I'd always take a book with me mm-hmm. wherever I go. I'd say a book, a passport, and a phone, and I'm, I'm good. I could actually live without the phone. It doesn't. It's, it's I would say a book and a passport. And I do with my kids, but I don't always get to, uh, to, to travel without them. Right, I try. Yeah. And that kind of leads into my next question. I have a feeling I know what the answer will be, but is there any books that you recommend? On oh, what's the topic? <laughs> um, anything. Well, the first time. Um, the first book that really started the journey for me with understanding you know, what I'm doing today is, uh, is, a, is a book called The Power of uh, Persuasion by James Bond. And that was the one I read on the flight to Bali. I was headed out to see a friend of mine who was traveling around the world. And I was in Heathrow Airport, picked it up, and read it for the 17 hour flight. You know, I was like, well, that's good. <laughs> where can I get more of this type of thing? To start the lifelong journey of learning about people and decisions, and ultimately how that applied to my business. Very cool. If somebody was on the fence of travel, maybe they're at a job currently that doesn't allow them to do it, um, or they're just not sure if it's right for them, what would you tell that person if they're on the fence? If they're on the fence about doing a travel job, yeah, travel job, or well, you've got nothing yeah. to lose. You've got what have you got to lose? The biggest regret is ten years down the line, you've got kids in the mortgage and you wish you'd. You, know, you wish you'd have done it that type of, of thing, and that's as I as I talk about the stories in India and Sri Lanka, they're difficult for me to do them now. Obviously, the responsibilities that I've got, but the pleasure is knowing that, that I did it, and I can tell my kids to do it. I will do it again with my kids in a few years. You know, it won't be long before I take them to those places. I'm not sure I'll go in the deep dark jungle of Sri Lanka with them, but I'll certainly take them and let them experience you know life on on the other side of uh, the. the I'm going to say the pond certainly did the other side of what we have as a Western world and you know, what those countries uh, can do for you and you know, how they almost cleanse you if you like them or the fact that we think it's important. It isn't. So, what have you got to lose? You always go back. As long as you're not reckless, um, you will regret it. Not doing it will be paid, will, will, you will regret. You won't regret doing it because you always go back. Was well, there anything else that you want to? Tell the listeners or let them know about. Yeah, if you want to find me, I'm at paulgoff.com and my physical therapy business school podcast. I've got a book coming out uh, 1st of July 2018, whenever you listen to this. Uh, you can uh, find that at paulsmarketingbook.com. It's all about how I grew my business using uh, direct to consumer marketing. And all of those links will be down in the show notes. Listeners, if you're looking for the next episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast, you can go to the Facebook page, New Medical Nomads podcast. Uh, we also have a group there, New Medical Nomads, and you can blast any questions there. If you want early access to the episode, you can subscribe to iTunes or YouTube. And everybody have safe travels. Thank you.